Welcome or welcome back to our channel. Here's a quick recap if you're a new subscriber. I'm Sarah and this is my partner Kieran. And three years ago we moved to a farm in the forest of Norway to build our home and to grow our own food. We've had numerous challenges over the years and at times it had felt like nothing was going right. Winter is hard, winter is long, but we've learned to take one challenge at a time and little by little this homestead that was once full of trash has transformed into a truly amazing sanctuary. Now we live together with our cats, chickens, ducks and sheep in a beautiful chaos where the highs and lows are never ending. Spending our days teaching ourselves life skills, doing carpentry and working in the garden. And that is what we want to show you today, our vegetable garden, also known as the Mandala Garden. This garden started out as an overgrown nettle field, and we have cardboarded the entire area to kill off weeds using a growing method called Noti gardening. This method aims for minimal disturbance of the soil, which will result in fewer weeds and stronger plants. The weeds are relentless here as our soil is really healthy, but now finally on season three, they're starting to give up. This year, I planned the garden thoroughly throughout winter, making sketches and doing lots of research. We defined 14 staple crops at the beginning of the season that you can learn more about in our previous video. And I focused mostly on them, although we have ended up sowing over 30 different vegetables in the garden altogether. We also created a little pumpkin patch and planted over 70 pumpkins that can both climb on the fence and spread out on the cardboard. And maybe we'll beat our record we had last year, where we harvested over 100 pumpkins. The spring here this year was rough and we had six weeks of no rain. Last year I started most seeds indoors, which ended up being an insane amount of work with moving seedlings around and watering. So this year I was going to direct sow as much as possible. However, since we had no rain for all of June, nothing germinated and I ended up having to start over and sow in the greenhouse where I could keep on top of watering. That round of planning thankfully succeeded, but it also meant that a few of our vegetables like beets, Swiss chard, beans and root vegetables like carrots and parsnips are a bit behind schedule. Luckily, we had plenty of rain in July and the long days filled with sunlight here in the north will help them catch up. The drought ended up causing an accidental succession sowing though. Succession planting is when you grow seeds at intervals in order to maintain a consistent supply of harvestable vegetables. Some of the seeds I direct sowed did make it and will be ready to harvest on time. And then we'll get another round of harvest later on, which will be the plants I sowed in the greenhouse. It's great to feel how much we learned in the last two years. A setback like seeds not germinating would have crushed my confidence during our first growing season, but now that we have a few seasons on our backs, it's easy to predict the problem and solve it. Not too much is producing yet because of the setback we had in the spring, but we do have lots of herbs like basil, oregano, tarragon and dill, and salad, kale, onion, zucchini and a few bush beans. But it won't be long until the beets, Swiss chard, tomatoes, celery and fennel are ready as well, in addition to broccoli and cauliflower. But honestly, we're totally fine with our garden being a bit behind schedule this year, because we've been so consumed with other farm projects, and we know that we will get a lot of food in the end that we can store for winter.
We focus a lot more on flowers this year. And the Mandala Stone Circle has turned into a medicinal mandala garden where we have planted echinacea, calendula, chamomile, helichrysum, sunflowers and arnica. And there is a lot more insect activity in the garden because of this, especially bumblebees. We also got in honeybees. A neighbor put six hives on our land and we got honey as payment at the end of the season. They blend flawlessly in with the farm and we often forget that they're there. We're trying to take our self-sufficiency to a new level this year by saving seeds. We let a couple of parsnips and onions overwinter in the ground last year and they've now gone to seed. That way we can soon harvest and use to grow more parsnips and onions next year. In addition to that, we're going to harvest seeds from beans, peas and calendula when they're ready. I'm also trying to grow as efficiently as possible this year and I try to have seedlings ready for when a bed opens up. I'm continuously filling in salad seedlings as we're eating salad, for example, and sowing vegetables like broccoli and cabbage to plant in a bed when we harvest garlic. The first year we had a garden, we only did one round of sowing, both because we didn't know how to succession plan, but also because we were so busy with other projects. However, this year, no bed is going to be empty. We done mainly maintenance in the garden this year and focus on other projects. By the end of the season, we're going to cardboard and wood chip the last part of the garden and make beds ready for next year. That means that we'll then utilize the entire fenced in area and the mandala garden will be complete. Becoming a good gardener is mostly about observing the plants and learning the language and understand what they're trying to tell you. We're no experts yet, but I do think that this will be our most productive garden harvest to date. We're beyond proud of this garden this year. It's nothing but a huge success, despite the challenges we had. So stay tuned for future harvest videos. I hope you liked this video and we'll see you in the next one.